Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 4, Skull Basher. Hello, this is Anna here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil, with Day 4, Skull Basher. Now, Skull Basher is Skull Grinder's servant, bodyguard to Skull Grinder, to protect him from the Toa that are coming to get the Mask of Creation. So, Skull Basher here is pretty cool. He is 72 pieces and is set number 70793. Overall, really nice looking box. You can see the forge up here, which is pretty cool. And on the back, you can see that you have Skull Basher fighting the Toa. Now, what's really neat about Skull Basher is that he does have a pretty unique gimmick that does not feature gears, as well as two different ways of removing masks. So let's take a look at Skull Basher. So here is Skull Basher. Skull Basher is quite large, and since he's meant to face Onua, really works quite well. He is a purple and silver color scheme, which is really nice, but he does have two shoulder, two orange shoulder pieces here, and two orange leg pieces back here. But that's okay, because there's two there, two there, not just like one random one. So his color scheme is the most consistent. I also like how the upper arms are trans purple, and the lower legs are black to match the feet, which are the same feet as Onua. So he's really solid. Also, the rib cage piece is back, now in trans purple, and he has these cool horn pieces. And I say cool horn pieces because they have one major flaw. Because they're attached to his head like that, they're on the mask release lever. Which means... Yeah. Here's my biggest problem and probably my only real complaint with this set. And this is going to be an issue ever since the pictures came out of these. Is that it's really easy to knock his mask off. Really, really easy to do so. Plus, he does have another fault. Uh, he can't use some masks. For example, if you remove that mask, you can see you can't put the uh, the Liwa mask on. It doesn't actually fit because of the horns. So only certain masks that are small, like the Skull Basher slash Scorpio mask, really work. Like I said, same mask as Skull Scorpio, but it looks a lot cooler with the horns attached. Now articulation-wise, this guy has a ball joint neck. He's got shoulders, he's got elbows, wrists, hips, knees, feet. So the standard joints that you would expect, nothing new. Except you'll notice his arms are moving. That's part of his functionality. But for his function, we need weapons. So as you can see, Skull Basher comes with two giant blades, which are just the same blades that Skull Scorpio's tail used. Seeing this consistent thing of, oh look, new parts! Oh look, new parts used across multiple sets that are released back to back. Anyways, as you can see, he does have these giant blades, and you also notice, again, his arms are moving. That's because on the back here, there's a button. And this button is actually a control device. So, using not a spring, but just this rubberized piece on a uh, standard cross peg, you can see you can actually control his arms, which is really cool, because you can, like, throw an arm that way or that way, like that, or you can push him and his arms bash together. So they can just totally bash things as much as he wants. It's really cool because it's kind of like a control mechanism. And actually works really well in the, in the functionality. Because with the functionality, you don't really have to worry about hooking a mask with, you know, either there or there. Uh, you can just bash the heck out of a mask and knock it off. Let's do that. So pretty much if you have Skull Basher here, and he's just whacking Onua in the face with this claw... Thing, and then you can grab it and basically you just flail his arms around until you knock a mask off which includes his own because it's really easy to do now there is one other way for Skull Basher to remove masks and that involves just taking his horn and pretty much trying to take a mask off without knocking his own off by his chest plate Skull Basher is not the worthy owner of the mask of earth therefore it has become Corrupted. So the corrupted mask of Earth looks really cool. I like the purple. Uh, it does again. It matches the bone color here. Um, it's a very nice look. It matches the color scheme. I really like the way this looks on Skull Basher. And 
Unfortunately, this is the end of the infected masks. There is not one for Gali or Tahu. The most we get for Tahu is a completely infected one in the form of this transparent red one that was in the hero pack earlier in the year. And a transparent Gali mask is included with the LEGO Inside Tour package, which is limited to like 200 pieces, and most of us will never own that. Hooray. But yeah, this is the last infected mask, unfortunately. We don't get the other two. So overall, Skull Basher is quite awesome. I think he's probably one of the more solid sets. I really, really do like him. My only complaint is, well, that. Um, it is really, really, really easy to knock his mask off. And it's a minor problem, but it's actually one of his biggest attractors. But overall, I gotta say, I really do like Skull Basher. His gimmick, uh, his functionality is very unique. His mask looks really cool on him. He's a very large and imposing character. I really think Skull Basher is great. And I would highly recommend him to Bionicle fans out there. That is all for day four here on Bionicle Week. We only have one more full set to review, and that is Skull Grinder vs. Mask Maker. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. Until then, be sure to check out three videos a week here on Soundout 12, Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Soundout's Toy Chest on Thursdays, and the Soundout Review on Saturdays. So be sure to check out HeroTaka.com for all of your Bionicle news and more. Until next time, this is Soundout saying goodbye. <laughs>